Hello, I'm Michael Pearson. This is The Human Condition. Today we're talking about can brain cells regenerate? Well, the answer is yes and no. Brain cells can regenerate in three main areas of the brain. In some textbooks it may be four areas of the brain. The most popular areas, the most common ones that are discussed, are the temporal lobe for memory in the hippocampus, which is the area where we consolidate memory from new memories to relatively short-term memories that last for about two weeks, to long-term memories that are modulated by the thalamus for about a year. So that process of learning, or rather memorizing, takes a period of time. The beginning of processing the memory starts in the temporal lobe in the hippocampus, and those cells can regenerate throughout life in very small numbers. There's also a group of neurons in the frontal and, and temporal lobes that are connected to the olfactory system or the smell system. When you smell, you have information that goes in through the first cranial nerve, your olfactory nerve, and that nerve goes up into your frontal lobes and to your temporal lobes on both sides, and you actually can make new neurons throughout your life with regard to some of these smell neurons. Again, it's not a lot of, of turnover, but we do make some new neurons. There's some discussion about other areas of the brain, one or two other areas that are not for sure yet. But the interesting part for us to understand is that we don't have to make new brain cells all the time. In fact, humans lose brain cells all the time. Every year, humans lose a number of neurons to senescence and death. They get old, they die, and they go away. And in fact, volumetric studies that measure the volume of the brain show atrophy and shrinkage of the brain in many normal people that are quite cognitively robust and smart. They have good memories, they have good ability to think, they have good emotional processing systems, and they have good memories. So what is it about these people that makes them so strong and robust despite the fact that they're losing tens of thousands of neurons all the time? Well, it's probably brain-derived nerve growth factor. BDNF is one of the major factors that we know of now, and that's a molecule that is generated inside your brain and your spinal cord and your peripheral nerves, and it makes new connections. It stimulates the little, the little arms, the little tentacles of neurons to grow out. It signals them to uh, bridge with other neurons and make a synapse, which is a gap between one nerve cell and another. That synapse, that gap, is the processing unit for neurons. Every nerve cell or neuron has like 10,000 or more connections for each neuron. So it's really the number of connections between neurons and the quality of those connections that's much more important for processing than the number of neurons. So it's quite possible for a person to lose neurons throughout their life, but still get smarter and smarter and smarter. And in fact, I've seen some patients that have had small strokes, and uh, after the stroke they do rehab, and they say, I think my brain is better than it was before the stroke. And yet, they have evidence of stroke damage on their MRI, a very small area of true stroke damage. But for the neurons that they lost, they generated many, many, many fold more connections in the neurons that were left alive. It's possible for brain cells to regenerate through synaptic regeneration and not necessarily through new, new nerve cell growth. We don't give birth to a lot more new cells. There is a great deal of argument about where and when and how many new cells develop, but no one will claim that adults after age two make a large number of new nerve cells in their brain. The advent of stem cells and exosomes may make that change. There may be some differences with that, but generally unadulterated humans don't make a whole lot of that. The last piece of this discussion is growth hormone. Human growth hormone is a brain hormone that can be stimulated by temperature changes and exposures to cold. It can be stimulated by fasting. It can be stimulated by calorie deprivation. It can be stimulated by trace mineral exposure for individuals to have trace minerals. And so there are several natural ways for a person to release more growth hormone throughout their whole body, which helps their brain as well, but it's not as, as direct as brain-derived nerve growth factor, which makes the actual new connections of the synapses, the, the connections between the cells, not growing actual new cells.